Hello and welcome to this new episode of Point Counterpoint. We are here once again with fellow crusaders for the sake of Goa. This was supposed to be a debate but it will be more of a discussion on the whole issue of what people, activists and people who love Goa are calling an invasion into the private properties and land of Goans by the Southwestern Railways for the double tracking project executed by the Rail Vikas Nigam Limited. We as a newspaper and a media house have been uh, humbly crusading with the people on this and one feels very strongly about the fact that this particular panel does not have a representative of either the SWR, the RVNL or the Deputy Collector Murmuga or any other official uh, who will uh, who would have at least given some semblance of a viewpoint of the other side explaining to the people of Goa as to what entailed, what gives them this entitlement to get into private lands under the garb of building an embankment to raise the height of the land uh, adjoining the, uh, pro uh, the proposed double tracking work which is, which is going on especially in the whole area of uh, Majorda, ROC, uh, Kansauri, that whole belt. Now, before we get into and again reintroduce the panelists who are very well known in their own right all over Goa, I'd like to uh, take our viewers back to a date, June 19th, 2020, when the uh, Deputy Collector of Murmugao under his hand and seal issued a notification intending to acquire land for the uh, double tracking project. The intent to acquire uh, 60,177 uh, square meters of land from Kule to Margao and Margao to Vasco came as a shock to many people primarily because they felt that this would be the beginning of the end as far as uh, the, you know their lives in Goa uh, and, the, and the lives and livelihoods in Goa were concerned. Be as it may, the double tracking has been justified under uh, under many points by the powers that be. The why we are here today again is because what seems to be is that another acquisition, an illegal acquisition, at least the earlier acquisition was backed by some semblance of documents though that can be challenged also. The manner in which that acquisition was done can also be challenge the manner in which uh, the objections were invited hurriedly during COVID time, there were no hearings done. We will, we have spoken about that, but you know, for the sake of brevity, we will we'll not get into that right now. But what we will get into it for sure is that the current activities going on in that area where private lands which are not at all under the acquisition notification that I just mentioned are being encroached upon, people are being harassed. Uh, there was one lady who wanted to barricade her house uh, to protect her land against uh, uh, you know this this kind of encroachment hurt those trucks uh, which were uh, which were bringing the material they were stopped there was absolute rudeness on the part of the uh, of the deputy collector it is alleged uh, and so on and so forth so rather so the victims of this harassment have now become the accused in the eyes of the powers that be which again is shocking. So these are things that we will we will ultimately discuss. Before we again introduce the panelists, just one more point that I'd like to uh, you know humbly submit. The double tracking, the tracking, the tracks came after the houses did in many cases. There are ancestral and traditional houses there. We remember and we know that there are houses which are as old as 1805. There are so many names that our panelists will know whose houses came late. I can just mention one that comes to mind immediately is a, is a gentleman called Ashok Souza, very much a part of the movement. His is the sixth generation living in that house from 1805. So my point is his tracks, the tracks came after the house. So how can they, how can people actually say that why are the houses built next to the tracks? The tracks came later, not the houses. There are so many people who've been part of various agitations earlier. For instance, I can, I can speak of uh, Billy Pereira of Utorda who was part of the Concord Railway Realignment uh, movement. He's, you know, he has been there, he's still in his lifetime, he's facing the second uh, agitation of this sort. Uh, one can also remember the uh, Al um, Alvaro Pereira who's a musician in, in that in that area. His daughter, is, his granddaughter is now fighting the agitation. His father fought against the Concord Railway Realignment. 
so the issue is that you are also working in an area which has a spirit of activism the spirit of uh, fighting for the land so it's not going to be easy because the people are not wrong here anyway i've spoken a lot i will uh, limit my uh, my words <coughs> from now on over to the panelists i will first uh, introduce them on my right is uh, alina saldana former kortali mla but more importantly a former minister for environment the government of goa and uh, but better known as a people's crusader and i think that's the hat that she would love to wear more than anything else uh, next to her is one of the champions of the uh, people's cause in that area and elsewhere orville or orville uh, uh, dorado who's a founder of the goencho airport yeah. orville has been uh, again uh, you know heading and shepherding umbrella organizations of people uh, right from the very beginning and he was i think he probably was one of the first people to lay the foundation stone of this movement um, against double tracking on my right is ella maskrenas secretary of uh, goencho airport again another very fiery crusader especially in the roc belt and she has fought bitterly and very strongly against that encroachment into that beautiful st lawrence chapel in in uh, in roc and last but not the least olenso simoes who is again not only affected by double tracking or has been with the gre for a long time needs no introduction all part of the uh, same movement that we've been talking of uh, alina i have no further questions uh, based on whatever i have said i just request you to, for your opening remarks and how you feel about the situation well i think development in the true sense is always welcomed by the people but if development is going to lead to destruction destruction of all aspects of life then people are forced to oppose it and to come out on the streets and with respect to the double tracking south western railway double track i think people have been suffering over centuries because the over centuries no more than a century right. okay right. and uh, i can say that as far as my husband's family my family okay and others they gave their land in fact it was a pathway that was given to lay the first track okay and unfortunately ever since all these families along that reside along the pathway have been suffering and facing all kinds of problems like noise pollution and this noise pollution the degree of noise pollution seems to be increasing with every passing day and sometimes i've heard villagers saying could it be that they are doing it on purpose the honking at any time of the night okay then you have the coal dust pollution coal dust pollution leading to health problems because it is a well known fact that coal dust contains heavy metals heavy metals like lead arsenic mercury which are highly toxic in nature and obviously will lead to all kinds of respiratory problems including cancer asthma etc not only that the very houses in which we live undergo vibrations each and every time a train goes by and these vibrations have led to cracks on the walls of the houses right. on the floor of the houses right. Right. okay right. Mm -hmm. and it is amazing in fact in some of the houses where the cracks are on the floor you can see how the cracks are now climbing the walls right. of the house right not only that what about risk to life because there are no roads provided the tracks have come in and everyone including the senior citizens school going children everybody who needs to go to the basic facilities and amenities has to cross the track right, right. so mm -hmm. there is risk to our life mm -hmm. every time okay and why is this how long ago that the first track was laid more than 100 years ago that's right, that's right. surely the mm. government had enough time to mm. put in certain infrastructural facilities to make life safer but no the government could have put in rob's rub's fob's for the benefit of the seniors but nothing has been done till date showing you know mm. no concern whatsoever right. 
right. for the seniors, for our school going children. Can you believe it? Children who are in the middle school in the fifth and fourth standard are crossing the tracks. How right, risky right. it can be. Right. So I would like to ask the question. Now the government wants to lay the second track. Where is the second track coming? Even closer to the houses. Right, right. In fact, we have been uh, informed by RVNL that to lay the second track, you need 14 meters from the center of the existing track. Okay. Now, if we, we have done this marking, we did this marking when we, we invited the Honorable Chief Minister Dr. Pramod Savant onto the tracks. Mm -hmm. We invited uh, the Honorable Minister Nilesh Cabral onto the tracks yes, yes. and we did the markings. Right. Where, did the, where do the markings land? Okay. Okay. Inside the compound. So, can, can this can kind Correct. of Absolutely. work be called development? I'll come back to you because there's yes. so much to unpack. So, yes. this is not but right. But I'll come back. Absolutely. I'll come back to you and we'll dwell more. Uh, we do not call this development. We call it destruction. Uh, Aurel, just, uh, you know, uh, taking off from where Alina left off, I just wanted to uh, request you to focus a little bit on this current agitation and what was the spark and what really has happened because layman doesn't really un understand what is really going on. And, and why, you know, is this uh, so hot at this point? Right. Yes. Uh, I'm uh, taking back yes. the viewers to the last pa uh, past 10 days. Right. Uh, when we noticed some uh, activity in our area. Yes. And it was uh, parallel to the existing tracks, mm -hmm. as one can say. Mm. Uh, there was some uh, earth being dug up there. And when we are passing, we thought that uh, the owners, because that Which area, location was this, it? This is exactly in the, on the right on the border of uh, Kansalim and Welsam. Right. Mm. Right, right in front of, just opposite San Tome Church. Church, right, right. Okay. Right, right. So we thought maybe there is, uh, the owners may be uh, mm. uh, away or something and they may be doing some boundary right. wall. We were quiet about it. Right, right. On the third or fourth day, I saw a JCB entering there, mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, in late evening. Mm -hmm. And we questioned. Mm. Uh, those they said we are from the railways mm -hmm. you know that alarmed us right and uh, the, in that interim 10-15 uh, minutes the a small uh, uh, crowd of villagers gathered and mm -hmm. we sh sort of shoot them away you know mm -hmm. we didn't want to you know mm -hmm. because those guys are just laborers there right we shoot them away we told them this is private property please do not enter here right and we went about without whatever mm -hmm. next they said, day they said nothing nothing to do with the acquired land no at all, this at all. Okay. Uh, yeah this mm -hmm. now is uh, the acquisition is happening on the western side of the right. tr existing tracks right and this particular strip of land is on the eastern side so and there is no land acquisition happening in that particular area whatsoever right, right. so we were little alarmed we, we didn't know what was happening hmm. uh, next day we there were some engineers from their junior engineers we confronted them we asked them what's happening and they hmm. were mommy but we, they said ask our uh, seniors we hmm. are Hmm. We are just doing, we are, uh, uh, right. we have orders and we have this, uh, we have to build this wall. Right. What wall? They hmm. say, we don't know. Hmm. You know, by that evening, right. they started, uh, they brought the JCBs in our absence. Right. They poured concrete and that's when, uh, Olenso who is on our panel here, hmm. he hmm. was there. Hmm. Hmm. Ashok Soza, whom you mentioned earlier, yes. he was there. Yes. And a few other uh, villagers, we accosted the uh, guys right. and said, stop, you know, hmm. but in the interim, they called the police, the Verna police. Now, here I just want to mention mm. our, uh, the police, the Goa police, you know. For all reasons, mm. they have to be law enforcers. Here we saw somebody encroaching a private land. Yes. And encroachers were, being you know, protected. being protected, sort mm. of protected, you mm. know, in mm. the sense mm. that they said, no, you cannot stop them. You cannot stop them. You get a high court order, you get a court order, mm. you get a whatever order. Based on that only we will stop. We, are, we, we were telling them that we know being locals in that area, we know the terrain very well. Despite that, they said, no, you, you are nobody. You know, they threatened us. Mm. Who, was, who specifically did this? The PI from uh, Verna. Right. Yeah. Right. So, mm. what I want to say What's is... What's his name? Kapil? Uh, no. no. Uh, he is uh, Daigo uh, uh, Gracious. Right. Right. Okay. So, here was this uh, gentleman threatening the public whom he is supposed to support, mm -hmm. you know, right. because we are, 
we are uh, pointing out to a illegal illegality. right right illegality by somebody who is not even part of the village hmm. Hmm. they are not of uh, they are not sure. part of the village sure so we we question him you know that hmm. you know see these people are not from here and hmm. why is the rvnl engineers or officers are not here to hmm. guide their team why hmm. their supervisors are not here right because every time we notice that they leave these poor laborers there you know and to be at the mercy of the villagers right, right. if at all something right. untoward right. happen right right and uh, so that was it next day uh, we somehow we managed to contact uh, the owner uh, ms shalini barboza and uh, she was shocked she doesn't live here in goa she doesn't live here okay okay yeah no she lives in goa she lives in goa, goa. she doesn't live in the wells village yes yeah. yeah. and she was shocked but she Uh, uh, did not notice what had happened three days earlier when Harold reported that Harold was the first to break this news that certain illegal uh, works were being uh, going on there, going yeah. on mm. on the eastern side. Mm. So she said, "No, how they can do this? You know, poor mm. thing. She was all uh, mm. flustered and she mm. she was all taken up. Yeah. And uh, we called her to the side next morning, and she was there. She accosted." whoever was there said it's not to be done you know this is my property here. and there it was a shocker to all of us the owner the land owner was there herself mm -hmm. and the authorities mm -hmm. that is the rvnl assisted by the goa police they told her proof that this land belongs to you So basically, she as a Goan landowner, she needed to prove that the land belonged to her. Exactly. Okay. The irony is there. I'll come back to Arvil. Ella, um, uh, you could speak about this, but I I just uh, like to draw your attention to the 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 micro movement that you know you and others are leading in ROC. The same issue has happened there. Yes. Where that chapel is literally been in, uh, literally encroached upon. Its entrance is completely blocked. So what is the specific illegality? Then tell me, tell us a little bit about that that fight also, because I feel it is linked to this fight as well. Yes, yes. it is. Yes. Yes, uh, from the beginning of this uh, movement, mm. uh, we have uh, been bringing to the notices of the authorities that uh, uh, Saint Lawrence Chapel in Arosi is uh, our heritage. It belongs to our forefathers. It was. It shows in the map of uh, 1610, which was drawn by the cartographer Emmanuel Gudino. Right. Okay. Right. So, uh, if it shows in 1610 and the railways came. a late 18th century mm -hmm. somewhere in 1888 or 89 mm. so how can they encroach on our heritage structure mm -hmm. it belongs to the people of roc mm. uh, first they came and they uh, uh, started digging mm. around the chapel right which was promptly stopped by right. the villagers then uh, one fine day we saw trucks of uh, material being brought in mm -hmm. and dumped at the site mm -hmm. Uh, so i received some pictures from the neighbors and then uh, we we at coinsoy equot we sent a message across to the whole of goa please come save our you know the heritage, heritage structure yes, yes. yes. Hmm. and uh, the next day everyone gathered we also uh, rang the bells more villagers came our mla came mrs sadana uh, the the village panchayat and uh, everyone told them this is illegal and you please take your material and move away from here right so they did right we we waited there till you know till they did uh, take everything away but uh, one fine day then we saw they had barricaded the the right of way to the chapel and uh, again we called the police you mean the all. narrow road that leads to it, that narrow road that leads yeah, to no the, the other side of the, the road one. Yes, okay, okay, where okay. the uh, now our village is uh, into half right right it's right, one right. is eastern one is western yes, so yes, yes. Uh, the people have to come across mm, mm, yes mm. so then they barricaded that again we called the police and all and it was removed so time and time again they come and they harass we have just one priest there and you know he doesn't know you know what to do about it then we call the committee the committee gets involved they have all the papers they know till where is their land and you know how in portuguese time and the church they have all their papers absolutely correct yes so but was this land that has been kind of blocked <coughs> and access denied was it part of the acquisition of notice 
there is mm. there is no acquisition mm. in ROC at that that place. That place, right? Yes, right, right. right and right, in right. the chapel, there's mm. no land acquisition. Mm. Mm. So this has been done completely by force, yes. illegally. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They uh, they they just don't bother whose property, right. whose land. Mm. The, everything is theirs. Even Correct. even near uh, our house, they have done the same thing. Right, they have right. dug the storm water drains mm -hmm. and they have put in the cables. And uh, now I've just left it like that. Tomorrow our village will flood. Right. Right. They don't understand, mm. you know, the the topography or right, uh, of right. the the land at all. Yes, yes, the villages. Well, so I'll, I'll get to you. Uh, see, the issue is again. I'd like you to uh, just zero in on one aspect, and, and I asked Orville as also. Uh, how do you think the RVNL and SWR are going to justify this? Because if you put your put yourself in their shoes, I know it's difficult. But from their point of view, is there any way any any purported justification that they can give for this? Is no, it, you know? Yeah, I don't think so because yeah. first of all, I want to clear one negative perception among the people. Right. They say this is a central project. Right. Which cannot be stopped. Right. I'm sorry, this is a false propaganda created by this certain right. individual right. or politician. Right. 18 SEZs were denotified with a central notified uh, SEZ, Correct. which were denotified by the, by the Congress government at Correct. that time. Correct. So why can't this happen? Now the entire process of acquisition, first of all, is false and is totally illegal, and has already left. You are talking of the original acquisition. Yeah, original acquisition. Uh, the first acquisition, which was yeah. uh, started in uh, 2020, 2020. Yeah, the, the 19 June notification. 19 yes. June notification. Yes, 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 yes. Now right. that yes. notification itself is lapsed. Right. Because the notification clearly said that it uh, within 12 months' time, the entire process of acquisition has to complete, mm. which has lapsed. Now they have uh, acquired under three different acts. If you see the acquisition, has done under three different acts. One, they initially in 2009, they started in a Land Acquisition Act 1894, which okay. again was, was on hold. Right. Then in 2019, 16 September, they started as per the Right to Fair Compensation Act uh, 2013. Right. Then because, because in, fact the, in fact, the Right to Fair Compensation and Transparency in Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act 2013 is in force now. Right. And under that act, you have to take first the consent of the owner because the preamble of that act clearly says that in consultation with the institution of local self-government and Gram Sabha established under the constitution and so on. You are talking so of the Right to Fair Compensation. Right, right to Fair 2013. Compensation. Tw uh, 2013, yes. yes, yes. Huh. Now see what the government does. Just because consents were not given by people from Karas, Kas, Kasauli, Aroshi, Pale, yeah. Isor Singh, yeah. they evoked the uh, Railway yes. Act, that is the 1989. Correct. Now the Right to Fair Compensation Act, there are several acts which comes in the ambit of this act. One is the Railway Act. Right. One is the uh, uh, National Highway Act 1954. Right. Uh, like that, there are 13 acts which fall in the ambit of this Right to Fair Compensation Act. Okay. Yeah. So the, now the acquisition takes place as per the Railway Act, which right. is, itself is illegal, and compensation is not given. No, as but, per the, but under Section 20 of the Railways Act, under which this has been done, this that's the section. Isn't there provision for consent? No, there is no provision uh, consent, but uh. but this act is not in force. You cannot acquire a land as per the Railway Act. You have to acquire the land as per the Right to Fair Compensation right, Act right. in consent with the owner hmm, or with hmm. the local body or right. the local panchayat. So you are challenging the acquisition under the Railway Act itself? The, uh, the okay. process itself is fully illegal. Right, now, right. because these hindrances have been created by certain uh, uh, enlightened landowners Correct. and groups. Right. Now they are desperate. Right. They want to uh, barge through the anyone's property. Right. Uh, criminally trespass the right. properties and, right. and construct. Now, clearly the Supreme Court mm -hmm. in the 9 May 2022 judgment have clearly said that uh, uh, this is the Goa Foundation petition. This is the right? Goa Foundation yes, pe yes, petition yes, that yes. the Castle Rock and the Cooler project has been scrapped. Right. Precisely because this come to the Western Ghats. Right. And 120 hectares of land will have been destroyed right. of this Western Ghat. And this Western Ghat is spread across nine national tiger reserves. Correct. 20 national parks. Correct. 68 wildlife centuries. When they stop the double tracking through Mole, that judgment. Exactly. Correct. That, Correct. Uh, so yes, they are saying, why you are coming through this area? Right. Right. In fact, they have given an alternative very mm. clearly. They have mm. said, go to Krishna Patnam port. Right. There, there is two tracks, which is underutilized. Goa also is underutilized. 
The yes. racks are coming Correct. empty, hmm. so it's not in full capacity, and it's mentioned in the Supreme Court. But the same principle order. should have been applied even outside Mole in these areas. Exactly. Well. So they're saying, why destroy this? And, and it has a gradient of uh, high gradient. Right. Why come? Because this, if you see the Kule uh, area, is always uh, prone to uh, landslides. Right. It's precisely because of that. Right. And adding another track will be further disaster to right. all of this. Right. So they are, the Supreme Court has clearly said, shift your thing to Krishna Patnam, which is underutilized. If you want, you go for third third track. An existing track of Goa is un underutilized. Plus, okay. the MPT have said that they are going to reduce coal. So, now who you are building this track for? Correct. Your uh, Verna st uh, passenger station, you have shut down. Initially, you fooled the people. I have said, CM Pramod Savan have said that this is for passenger, this is for tourism, this is for blah, blah, blah. Now, tourism, now passenger station itself is shut down in Vasco station. In uh, Kasaulito, there is no station at all. No, no one gets on, no one climbs over there. So, for who this track is built for? Why it is built for? What is the economic uh, economic viability for the state? Whether state is earning even 5 rupees through this project? I don't think so. Because all that they are doing is taking our taxpayers' money, building infrastructure for one person's profit. That is for Adani and Jindal. Now, if you see even the uh, Made, it's been diverted. It has been diverted precisely for this northern, no, uh, North Karnataka where steel plants are going to come. The water is going for their steel plant. It is not for drinking purpose. Correct. If the CEC report says that, uh, if whatever the CEC report says, we will abide by it. CEC report came, Supreme Court order came, still your, uh, your, your, you and your authorities are doing everything illegal. Authorities, government authorities should abide by the law. But the authorities itself is... <laughs> is violating the law, then this is a joke. If you see the deputy collector is silent on all illegalities. Initially, we had filed complaints that the rivulet uh, was uh, backfilled, trees were cut, you know, the WRD and the forest department itself visited the place, but but the collector administration is silent. Right. Why is he silent? You should explain to the people of Goa. Okay. Alina, I'll, uh, I'd like to kind of, uh, you know, take you uh, through the days when you were in government and of course, you were in government, but you are at the same time fighting for the people. Uh, a lot of what what Orwell says also dates back to that period, the the period of uh, of uh, the previous chief minister, Mr. Parikar. Now the issue is during that point of time, and since you are a local and you understand the issues well, what was going on in the government? What was the government's thinking, and what did you try to impress upon the government? There must have been a yes. difference of opinion. <coughs> if you could just share at that point of time, uh, what 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 really yes. was the conflict? Uh, actually, in? at yeah. that point of time, yes, it was very very obvious hmm. that the people were not going to accept this project right. okay? because it was totally anti people and anti right. every village where right. through which the track passes by now what was happening is uh, but the government was insisting so we decided we formed a committee and the committee decided that the government uh, like uh, government uh, persons like the honorable chief minister and all they should come on the tracks and they should you're talking see of mr parikar's time or pramod sound's time no i'm talking of uh, mr pramod yeah, uh, okay. yeah the yes. present uh, yes. chief minister In previous term. he yeah. came yeah. on the tracks right. okay all of us were present when mm. he was there mm. in fact i remember very clearly that he requested that the visit to the track should not be made public mm. Mm. and that was the condition Hmm. upon which he agreed to come and he came and believe me we took him to all the crucial points and what we did was before he could come onto the tracks we marked the where the second track was going to land the double track the second the double, double, track. double track yes, yes. yes. and he saw for himself that the double the second track was landing either on the compound walls or inside the compound or even on the veranda of the houses so obviously this was this you cannot call this development mm. this is sheer destruction mm. and i could see it on his face that he was taken aback mm -hmm. but when we asked him for his you know his, his decision comments or comments yes, on yes. what he had seen mm. he said he will let us like you know mm. he just went on making signs he would not talk mm -hmm. The same way we took uh, Nilesh Cabral, who was the environment minister, all along the track. He, we showed him exactly the same things that we showed the honorable chief minister. Mm -hmm. Again, he was blown with what he saw. Right. But when we asked him for his comments, he said, this is a very serious matter. And we need to have a definite separate meeting 
hmm. you know, to discuss the issue. And that meeting never, no, took, place. never took place. And yeah. why? Because they know that what they are trying to do is totally anti-Goa because Goa is too tiny to contain this kind of a project and it is totally anti-people of Goa. People of Goa are going to suffer. So how can you, for whose benefit is this project? If people are going to lose, right. like for example, sir, I would like to say what we saw just two days back where the land is being acquired. The track is coming in front of this newly constructed, reconstructed house, okay? And the second, another track is supposed to come hmm. behind the house. Now tell me, where are the people residing in this house going to go? Correct, correct. I mean, just one question before I go to Orville. Uh, would you say that this, these kind of injustices were some of the triggers which led you to part ways? Definitely. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely, mm. these are the reasons mm. why I had to part with the BJP. Mm. Because mm. as far as development, positive development is concerned, mm. the government was doing a lot of development in every village of my constituency. I was happy. People were happy. But this, this made everything else redundant and useless. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Orville, uh, if you could see, you've been part of the movement throughout, uh, you yeah. know, uh, part one, part two, all the parts. Just tell us, you know, obviously you, Ella, all of you all have been kind of negotiating, agitating, uh, you know, Alain, you also, all, all of you all. Can you just tell us, you know, when your interactions with the government, what are the kind of assurances and promises that were given to you and what is the status of those promises? Uh, let me just go back to 2020 when we started off the agitation, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us were, uh, you know, like babies, you know, right, we, we right. didn't know much about this. There were yes. some seniors who were there who, of course, assisted us right. uh, in the cause, who were uh, associated with the Konkan uh, realignment, I will say. That's uh, right, uh, which education. I briefly mentioned. Yeah. Yes. True. And uh, we took mm. it from there, you mm. know. Mm. And uh, yes, uh, we, we understood what was the game being played because uh, Every time we met somebody, and that somebody happened to be the deputy collector of mm. Marmongo Ataloka, mm. who was uh, uh, given the title of the competent authority. Yes. Right? yes, yes. Under the direction of the uh, collector South. Yes, yes. So everything, all the uh, energy was, you know, or whatever the headaches was focused on this particular gentleman. Right. And uh, at that point of time, we had a, a discussion with him. We told him that, see, this, what is happening is not right. It is, mm. it is against the ethos of, you know, mm. the social life in the villages because we are already suffering with eight or nine uh, wrecks passing through the right. day. Right. Uh, he gave us a patient hearing, but we understood, you know, he was, you know, he was not for us because he was simply following orders. And that's when we gave a call to various other NGOs. Right. And uh, everybody pulled in their resources. Then the signature campaign also yeah, started. Yeah, we did a signature campaign. Yes. All of us was involved. Then resolutions were taken across the Resolution over 100 panchayats. We right? asked the panchayats. Yes, we yes, went yes, across yes. Goa. Yes. We had 84 meetings. Going to mm. Ecuador itself organized 84 meetings mm -hmm. across Goa. There was also another uh, organization which I would like to mention. Uh, Goyan Kulsonaka, yes, they were there yes. as well. They did their rallies. Right. And I mean, it was sort of, uh, you know, we were doing our part, they were doing their part. Right. And uh, and thereafter, there came some other organizations which eventually became political parties. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want to mention them. Right. But uh, those were the sort of divisive forces who were, who were trying to, you know, break our movement actually. Right. right. But we are where we are, yeah. we are here today. And I see that there is. Uh, movement is now we are all getting together right, right. various organizations going to equal itself has a 36 organization that's and right. growing a full umbrella, umbrella. Yes, yes that's correct yes. and plus we have more uh, mm. organizations which have uh, you know uh, expressed their willingness to support us mm. directly or indirectly that's right that's there are people calling us day and night to our, you know to mm. our uh, members because they see that what going to equal stands for is for the people of goa irrespective mm. of whether you know whether we have or we have we have not whether we are you know professionals yeah, irrespective of ideologies leading nothing you know correct, nothing correct, we are correct, just correct, there yes. for the love of goa right yeah uh, well, i'll ask you the same question because you know during this whole movement i'll ask uh, well it's the same thing 
you know, if you can just enlighten us on the different kind of negotiations you all have had with the government, yeah. the kind of promises, whether those promises have been met or whether there's been betrayal. Uh, because from time to time, obviously, uh, you know, you, you used yes, to meet, some yes. assurances were given. Yes. So if you could just take a very important for people to know about these assurances yes. also. Um, on July 7th, 2020, yes. we had the uh, first uh, mm, get together on the railway tracks. Yes. Um, Mrs. Saldana was there, yes. Orville, Olias, everyone, all yes. of us were there. Yes. They, the railways brought the CRPF. Huh with guns and all, right. but uh, we were not afraid. Yeah. We did whatever we had to do. The argument was that we did not want uh, mm. the double track here. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we decided as a group that we must form an organization under which we can work, you know. Right. And uh, going to high court came into force. And, uh, you know, it was uh, during COVID times, yes, yes, the of peak of COVID, but we did not give up the fight. Mm -hmm. We would uh, sit in the night till midnight, write uh, memorandums, get up early morning, uh, reach the MLA's house before they leave their house, present the memorandums to them. We went to most of the MLA's in the south and some in the north. Mm -hmm. We went to the MP, mm -hmm. Mr. Sal uh, Sardin. Sardin. Yes. 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 And, uh, uh, and one fine day, uh, Mr. Kavlekar told us that uh, he will uh, arrange a meeting with the CM. And we all came to meet him here in uh, Panjim. Uh, he had the meeting with us. And uh, Olencio, then Captain Viriato, Royla was with us. All of us, we explained to him the bad effects of uh, double tracking, the coal, the Sagar Mala, everything was explained. Mm -hmm. And to that, he said, I'll get back to you in a month time. Mm -hmm. He never did. Right. Right, right. Until date, now mm -hmm. this is 2022, 23. Right. And and we are still struggling More with the same years. issues. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, let's, if you could also, uh, you know, uh, uh, add some more points to this. On the uh, subsequent kind of uh, assurances or fig leaves or whatever you call, uh, based on which you all had some hope. And and what is the situation as of now? Yes, see, if I if I recollect, mm. in mm. fact, we started this fight mm. in 2016 mm. when uh, when there was an expansion plan in mm. the port, mm -hmm. and we had an eight-day public hearing, and there we clearly said that this is for coal expansion. Right, right. And I re remember we, we met at then uh, Manohar Parikar, mm -hmm. and he said, "Don't say go against coal, say go against pollution." Right. You know. Right. And I remember that he had categorical made a statement in Kasauli. Right. That. He will not allow double tracking. Right. And yes, yes. looking at that, I thought promote someone who said is going to follow its footstep mm -hmm. should have done the same. But I think here somewhere he has backstep his own guru, uh, Manor Parikar, which had said very clearly that double tracking is not in the interest of Goa, and he, indeed it is not. So why why double tracking f uh, f uh, in Goa when the coal is going to shift it to the other state? Right. Now there, it's an industrial st uh, state in Belagkari. You shift it there. We have no problem. Don't destroy our state. Now you have taken our six rivers under the Indian Waterways Authority. Again, the six rivers are going to use for transportation of coal. You have passed a new amendment now, Major Port Authority Bill 2022. Now you have given the entire coast up to 12 nautical mile to the port to uh, to Adani in short, so that he can do whatever he wants in, in his waters by. In, uh, getting coal from mm. Indonesia or Australia. Then now you are selling even Madhe. Here, uh, double tracking also you are destroying. Then CRZ have 500 about to 50 meters precisely so that you keep on getting uh, more uh, jetties or mm. uh, berths across the uh, um, coastline of coastline, Goa. Yes, yes. So mm. where are we heading? Mm. What is the intention of this government to do with Goa? Goa as a whole and especially South Goa. One said you have shifted Mopa there. Now South Goa we are going to have decline in tourism, and you are declining this because you anticipate this, and then you want to convert all these areas into coal jetties and coal hub to make South Goa complete coal hub destination and transportation destination for northern Karnataka and, and eastern Maharashtra. What is your intention? Please tell the people of Goa because health we have seen in Murungwa Taluka at COVID time. Murungwa Taluka Vasco had the highest. Uh, number surge of cases, number of cases. Yes, yes, it's yes, precisely yes. because of this coal pollution. Right. In fact, Daji Salkal, who is own 
daughter is having a respiratory problem because of coal pollution so now what is what is the intention of, of this government we want to know and we are asking pramod sawant please use your mind we are not against development shift it to karnataka wo they are coal they will get keep us happy this is what we are asking from the uh, head of this state one quick question i'll ask others also see uh, one sees a pattern between the introduction of the major major port spill and which then became a major port act then the jetty policy which has been introduced and the double tracking what is the pattern that you see in all the all the three no it, it looks very clearly mm. that uh, you know here is the rivers been sold mm. now the ocean is been sold mm. coastline is been diluted by crz dilution mm. so it looks like everything is been privatized for a private profit mm. right where, where is the state profit please right. tell us where is the state profit and the local profit right you know right. the the livelihoods which are there how are they going to benefit how are the occupation traditional occupation going to benefit right. so this privatization of everything hmm. is not good for the state of goa not only goa in india it will destroy everything we have one side scientists are saying that climate change is very evident uh, india itself have promised in cop Uh, uh, cop cop 20 cop 20 yes, yes. that uh, they will um, zero coal uh, mm. emissions by 2050 right but here you are going full swing what right. is this what logic is no, this? you wanted to come in yes yeah. no uh, it appears that everything that is being done mm. in the name of development is actually not for the benefit of goa okay i would definitely dare to say that goa is being used as a corridor Goa is being used as a corridor for the benefit of the bigger states in the north and the south. Okay. Now, uh, with respect to coal, okay, S let's say the coal that's coming from Australia. It where does it have to land eventually in Karnataka? Okay. So why is the coal not being taken to that site in the state of Karnataka right. from one of the ports of Karnataka? That's correct. Because That's we all know that mm. Karnataka has twelve minor ports. Okay. I will not mention the names. It has twelve minor ports. It has one major port that is New Mangalore port. Okay. So many ports to do the needful. Why subject Goa to destruction and pollution? Alina, you know, when these uh, when the major ports uh, bill was being discussed and it was introduced in Parliament and others, at that point of time, was the state ever informed? Did you, as Emilys, know about the existence of the MPA uh, major ports bill and the draconian nature of it and the particular clauses which would completely make the local bodies subservient to the uh, to, to the major ports act? Did it ever ever come up in the assembly in any discussion? That it did come up uh, in the assembly. Yes, uh, but. Mm. passingly i would say right. it was not given due attention Correct. because this mm. is a major issue i remember the only okay. time it came into the assembly was just 12 days before yes. it was passed in the rajya sabha finally yes. before that nothing nothing, nothing no was there yeah. should have been very yeah. intense discussions on Correct. the issue the repercussions of the, this okay. whatever they want to do but nothing of that was really done right we have 10 minutes more on this debate i think we'll draw attention back to the current issue at hand as well the water we discussed is extremely crucial. Uh, or will if you could just tell us what is going to be the next few steps to protect the lands of individuals with, that are being encroached because there is an inspection coming up. What yeah. what are the what is the strategy whatever you can reveal at this point of time and what is the way forward in all aspects okay. legally judicially whatever. Uh, so first of all, yeah. uh, railways or the deputy collector they claim that uh, the railways own this land. Let me state here. that there has been no demarcation in this area right uh, there are areas you know where there is uh, uh, no survey number which they show us that there is so, uh, no survey numbers what it means it means that this is state land now how do we establish who owns this state means it's a central government it could be a state government it could be a local panchayat now just because this land adjoins it joins the existing railway tracks doesn't imply that this land is owned by the railways we understand from our ancestral records that our ancestors were kind enough to you know keep us as a heritage i call that as also as a heritage this uh, inscription description wherein it states like my paternal uh, grandfather's document it states mm. uh, that that our land is right up to the 
coming the fair that means it is up to the railway tracks railway track. that means my family's land goes up to the railway, railway track. tracks right so and india uh, in their uh, prudence what they kept is 10 meters on either side was kept in the monsoons it was being used as a strong water drains for the village because the topography if you come to the welsang or kansali or isursi you will see it all sloping towards the railway tracks right. yes. so the it was a natural flow for the water to go towards the sea or to the uh, river sal we could have lot of tributaries mm. out there for river sal in fact river sal originates from welsang not from nago or elsewhere like as it is mentioned and during summer we used to use it for our uh, conveyance because the track the track uh, railway track is was the actual path for the people to you know go walk through to. yes and yes. it was in a very straight line if you mm. can see on the mm. map mm. today that particular land is being claimed by railways as theirs so you that is the first it. thing that we have to fight against exactly right okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, unless a demarcation is done, where the owners, who are the owners, the the people who reside along the tracks, the the railways and yeah. the survey department, yeah. all these three entities are involved in this in this in this exercise so for demarcation. What are the next steps then? In concrete, so they yeah. cannot claim the deputy right. collector. Who is he? Hmm. He is a land revenue officer. Right. He cannot on his own decide, decide. the land ownership. Okay. Yeah. If he is so confident, let him state it that this right. land belongs to. Give us in writing. Right. We'll challenge it in the courts because yeah. we have the documents. Yeah. We as land owners, we right. have the documents. We'll I'll just it. come to you. I'll just ask Ella one question. Come. To, give me two minutes. Yes, uh, Ella, again uh, taking off from what we um, or we left off. Uh, if you could just talk talk to us about your interactions with the deputy collector, the police, and all that, and what have you, what's been your experience, and what are the next concrete steps that you all plan to do to protect the land? Um, the so far, they have uh, not been for us, for the local people. Hmm. We are the owners of our state. What is? They say it is for the betterment of the nation. Right. What is nation without people? Right. we are the people we are the nation yes yes so they have to work for us they cannot come and you know disturb our peace all the time no it's by and large settled that that doesn't seem to be happening correct. so what next yeah the, uh, the is next so is uh, like orville says hmm. uh, they have to prove the land is theirs we right. have to prove the land is ours right but right. uh, when it comes that to proving that itself is an irony exactly. that you have to, that you all exactly. have to prove the land is yes, yes it is an uh, irony yes i mean i just need to just come to you uh, so yes. talking about yeah. ownership of land yes. okay the deputy collector has been questioning us and yes. asking us to show evidence yes it is a well known established fact yes and this fact has been told to us by the higher ups at uh, rvnl that the railway department does not own a single document of land ownership so what are they talking about saying that the land belongs to the railways the land is of the people even the land that was given by our ancestors okay the pathway that was given to lay the first track even that land is still so in the name of the land owners uh, going back to the first acquisition you know which has been challenged by mr ashok soza one of the land owners and five others uh, i would like to share with the uh, with yes. the viewers yes a statement made by mr pp singh now mr pp singh is the he is the uh, advocate. advocate for the rvnl right mm. you know and this i'm i'm reading from the yes please read, please, please read, yes. you know it, it says that this is the judge uh, uh, dated 29th of november 2022 okay yes, 22 yes, yes. Mr P P Singh states that the officers of the South Western Railways are not rendering full cooperation to him. He points out that one of the officers whom he contacted points out to another and the other officer points out to the first. In short, despite time being granted, no reply is coming on behalf of South Western Railways. This is the lawyer's statement in court. This is the, the submission. This yes. is the uh, Mr. Ja uh, Justice M. S. Sonak and Bharat uh, P. Deshpande. They are the judges. Yeah, correct. So this is their, the, their, their order, order, order commenting order. on yeah. uh, that deposition. Yes. Accordingly, yes. at Mr. P. P. Singh's request, we grant one week's time to file the reply. Right. If no reply is filed, then the matter will proceed without such reply. Or in any case, the officers responsible for the delay 
will have to pay cost personally for the delay in filing the reply right okay yes. so i as this 3 months you know they took 3 months until they have they not have given the this reply is not not no. yet come yeah. uh olens we are we are kind of running out but if you can just uh, uh you know point out the 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 next steps to at least protect the lands of people and this encroachment See, that we see i think i think we are very clear number oh. one the the all illegal arvenal work which is taking place in welsaum hmm. uh, areas should be stopped immediately hmm. and it is the collector's responsibility to see that this is stopped or certainly there there will be lord a situation we will not allow anything illegal in our in our land you have criminally trespassed in our properties tomorrow you will come in our house also yes. and we will not we, we cannot That's keep true. quiet number 2 is that all other illegalities which are taking place will definitely go to the uh to the courts challenging this and uh, and we are also telling the government that this is not viable supreme court has clearly stated that you shift your track to another state this your intention is to make goa a coal de- destination hub but goa is small you know karnataka is a huge state maharashtra is a huge state having huge coast line goa is too small it's an ecological sensitive area we cannot afford If you see the Murumba Taluka is highly dense. We, we have, there are twelve major ports, but if you see in MPT, it's completely dense. If you see other ports like Paradip Port, it's a huge port where there are you know the d- density of the is very less. Right. You yeah. shift to those major ports, no issues we have. But don't come to Goa and destroy Goa and fool the people of Goa saying that this is a central project and we cannot do anything. This is a very uh, dumb, uh, um, you know, answer to the people of Goa. Mm-hmm. And we are hoping Pramod Savant, who who is the head of the state, will definitely work to the interest of Goa as he promised. He'll he'll save Madhe. Same way we expect him to save uh, save the South, South Goa the from this. coal destruction because it is not only limited to transportation of coal because the spillage which is taking place which is damaging the crops which is damaging the health of the people living around the right. a- area that right. right ella your last words on the issue taking into account the current situation and which way should we move um, i feel that uh, our government should take a stand on this mm-hmm. from a uh, very firm stand and the government should be with the people not against the people they should uh, they should work they should work uh, for the positive uh, you know uh, people have voted them for power right. Huh? right they they should work for us right we should not be you know banging knocking on the doors of the court or you know running to the police trying to prove that your land yes, is yours yes yes ali yes. i'll end with you i'll always then last yeah. words <laughs> you can yeah yeah, yeah. See, now what is happening is uh, Uh, during the last few days, there are a lot of complaints that have yes. panchayats in this area have been uh, right. uh, receiving. Right. So people now understand, mm. you know, that there is hope for them. Right. Earlier it was like it was uh, as Olenso said, people were under the false illusion that it was a central funded and centrally whatever mm. everything to, to do the center that it can just go through. Today. people mm. have understood and people are coming forward mm. to you know to lodge their protest in writing i have this particular you know documents, documents here from other land owners also i see which I they see. have submitted to the this is just a copy they have Very good. advanced good, copy good, they good, have good. forwarded right, right right to go in so court so whose I, lands are under threat threat ah, i okay. so from this uh, forum i mm. appeal to the govern masses do not get fooled mm-hmm. this is our land This is a land worth fighting for. Goa, as Miss Alina always says, is is you, you know it's too small a state to have these huge projects. These projects do not benefit the local uh, population. We are here, and we'll always be there as going to a court to support all these causes. Come what may. Yeah, Alina, if we could just sum up the whole thing before yeah. I end the debate. No, <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. that, yeah. I would just like to state. Sure. Now the double track, mm. South Western Railway double track, is a huge project. Okay, which is going to have so many implications on the lives of the people, on the environment, everything. I would like to know <coughs> from the government, being responsible for the people that have elected it to power, 
has the government conducted any survey, any study to find out what will be the consequences of this project on the lives of the people, on the environment in which we live? Mm -hmm. Has the government right. decided how the... Now, when we went two days back on site where, you know, the RVNL had encroached without acquisition, now there, that house is definitely going to be demolished. Demolished means it will have to go. Where are those people going to live? Has the government of the day thought about these problems that will be faced? I mean, who are we? Are we not the people that have voted the government to power? I think it's the responsibility and the moral duty of the government to ensure that there is no destruction. And as Orville said, Goa is too tiny and Goa is too beautiful. It's our Goa and we need to protect it. And I know all of us here, along with the people, we'll, we will do our best to protect our land, the Pearl of the Orient. On this note, we'll have to kind of wind this up. But before we do that, uh, a few important takeaways. The fact that uh, four representatives of the people, and there are many outside as well, who are a part of this cause, the very fact that uh, you know they are reacting, and all of us also have uh, understood and recorded that so passionately, is itself a very, very significant thing to note. What is also uh, unfortunate is that peace-loving, law-abiding citizens, in their anger and passion, at times, even out of the sheer anger, even talk about taking law into their into their own hands, not because they are unlawful people, but because their whole passion and hurt leads to this explosion of emotions, uh, where uh, you know it's up, you know out of out of deep frustration and anger that this happens, and any good good government, and we have no reason to believe that you know a government which is elected by the will of the people will think otherwise. And so, essentially, you know, these appeals to the government to at least have a proper dialogue, have a proper discussion, have a conversation where you treat the people with empathy because they're yours. These are all rightful expectations. They are not over-the-top expectations. They are not. They are not something atrocious. And again, you know, this whole misnomer that uh, people are holding up development or they're holding up progress and all that. That that myth has to be completely shattered because at the end end of the day. All they are doing is saying that, look, do things that are legal, don't affect our lives and livelihoods, don't affect our heritage, and don't kind of encroach into our properties, which are our own properties. That's It's as, as simple as that. And I think if that is what it has come down to, then I think this government is expected to take this very seriously. And before I finally conclude, I'd also like to point out that viewers may have noticed that there's no representative of the Rail Vikas Nigam Limited or the Southwestern Railways or nobody from the deputy collector's office, which would, you know, which would give them also an opportunity to, to give their point of view. We are all here to listen to them. But the very fact that our our colleagues who are, who are you know, who handle this program along with, along with me, when they reached out to RVNL, when they reached out to the deputy collector, they were actually kind of uh, uh, shocked and surprised to see the, uh, uh, the reluctance, the absolute uh, strong reluctance to be a part of this and uh, they, you know people people in that organization were just passing the buck asking us to talk to different kinds of people uh, the deputy collector of Murmugao uh, absolutely refused uh, to kind of uh, engage at this point of time so I want to tell them that look here is the opportunity that was given you all could have given your point of view we have uh, as a newspaper always respectfully recorded all your statements and whatever you had to say but with all these issues coming out of this particular discussion, I would say that at this point of time, they cannot complain of not being asked or not being reached out to. And even after this, if they have points to prove or points to, uh, to, to retort, we will be more than happy for them to, to, to tell us. If any anything that has been said in this forum, is there is, a, there is even an iota of untruth in anything that has been said. One would like to hear at this point of time. So uh, I'd like to end on this note. I thank all uh, our, uh, our panelists to have given so much of uh, passionate insight and information into the issues that surround this. Uh, I thank you all and we hope uh, this people's movement carries on to its logical and rightful conclusion. Thank you. Thank you.
ました。